How you guys doing? Chris Ignato here and you are watching Nature Now. So I want to talk to you guys a little bit about disturbed habitats. I get a lot of comments from viewers saying that you know they just can't find a lot of stuff because they're living in urban environments. Well you know I really agree that really makes things difficult to find a lot of stuff. I'm really fortunate where I'm in a suburban environment and I'm not too far from really great parks and habitats. But there are places called disturbed habitats that you can find a lot of cool stuff if you look around. So that's what this video is going to be about. Disturbed habitats are environments that you can find all over the place, especially close to human civilization. Those include places like the ends of parking lots, the sides of roads and highways, which you gotta be careful not to get hit, and of course abandoned lots, which you can find all over the place. Those are usually little bits of habitat that are being reclaimed by nature. You'll find crumbling and riding away pavement, you know, parking spaces, sometimes abandoned buildings. Don't go in them, they're dangerous. And, you know, just all sorts of stuff where plants and nature is taking that land back. There are many plants out there that are born survivors and they've either adapted to survive in these disturbed environments or they're pretty hardy as it goes. Now a lot of people call these plants weeds, but I really don't like that term. I find it a derogatory term and I prefer to call them herbs and just plants. Disturbed habitats are also home to plenty of edible plants and lots of medicinal plants. But I gotta tell you, I would kind of shy away from eating the, the wild plants you find in these soils because there could be pollution. You never know if there are oils or things dumped in the soil years before. You have no idea what was in that soil. And of course the plants can take that up and store it in their leaves. So unless you want to test some of the GI remedies on some of these medicinal plants you find in the soils, I would look elsewhere if you're going to be looking for food. Unless of course you're really depending on finding something and have no other option. Wild roses can pretty much thrive in any environment you throw them in, and of course that includes the disturbed environments too. Wild grapes are also rather plenty in these environments as long as there are trees nearby for them to hold on to. Now most of the plants you find in these disturbed environments provide all sorts of flowers that have plenty of pollen and nectar that the pollinating insects really, really depend on. You know, if they can't find anything anywhere else, these disturbed environments are a gold mine for them because you have the golden rods, which have tons of pollen and nectar, right? You have the, the different asters, you have the mountain mints, the chicories, plenty of milkweeds, and you know the monarch butterflies depend on them for their life cycle. The caterpillar of the monarch butterfly will feed exclusively on the milkweed plants and leaves. Multiflora rose and just a plethora of other plants that have lots of flowers at different times of the year that these insects, things like bees, wasps, ants, beetles, butterflies and moths, and many more depend on these flowers and plants. So if you want to find plenty of birds, mice, rabbits, insects, spiders and all that good stuff, Find the plants and herbs that they'll be eating, and many of which can be found in these disturbed environments. So get searching, you're going to find some good stuff. One of the common edible plants you can find in these environments is called Queen Anne's Lace. However, it can be easily confused with poison hemlock. That stuff will land you in the hospital in a heartbeat. You know, it can even threaten your life. But Queen Anne's Lace is also known as wild carrots. If you were to pull up that root, it'll smell identical to a carrot. A great way to identify this plant is when you look at the flower head clusters in the middle, you will always find a burgundy, red, or purple single flower surrounded by all those white flowers. If it doesn't have that, you best avoid it. But this video isn't about wild edibles, it's about disturbed environments. Another plant that you'll find plenty of in these environments are the pokeweeds. These plants can grow really tall and they have a very characteristic and famous scarlet to purple stem. This thing just catches your eye like a flag in the distance. That plant also provides plenty of dark purple berries known as inkberry, service berry, or of course pokeweed berries. As the summer grows late, you often see these plants missing a lot of their fruit and they're just beautiful to look at. This plant is called tall boneset. Boneset gets its name because it was often used to reduce fevers where people would have chills so violent that they could break bones. It's also said to aid in the speedy mending of broken bones, hence the name bone set. 
Snake root is another plant that likes to live in these disturbed habitats. They have these nice little white flowers with little tendril-like projections that come off them. They almost look like little hairs. Now, I can't fail to mention two plants that were not only reliable food sources for colonists, but are important plants to both insects and mammals alike. Those plants are dandelions, which while the entire plant is edible, its roots provided a good coffee substitute, although no caffeine. And that leads me to the second plant, who also provided a good coffee substitute and extender. That plant goes by the name of chicory. And like dandelion, chicory is also valued among insects and mammals as an important food source. Red clover is another sought-after delight shared by pollinators, mammals, and of course, human beings. Daisies, black-eyed Susans, little white asters, those famous goldenrods, and dozens more call these habitats home. And after a decade or so, you'll even start to see various tree species starting to take hold. Trees such as pine trees, cherry trees, aspens, and even the introduced yet rather showy tree, the mimosa, also known as the silk tree. What beautiful and unique flowers this tree has. One of the trees that often move in provide a staple food source, and those are known as the, the Quercus species or the oaks. This lady keeps watching me. And uh, as you know, oaks provide thousands of acres. Yeah? Get out of here, you good for nothing vagrant. Okay, okay. I said scram. Okay, I'm sorry. Calm down. You look like a beatnik. And if you're into reptiles and amphibians, you can still find them in these habitats. Usually, though, their species are represented by toads, garter snakes, and brown snakes. In fact, usually when I find brown snakes, it's almost exclusively in disturbed areas. So, that's another habitat under your belts. Again, if you want to find a lot of wildlife, but you live in the urban environments, just look for those abandoned lots, the ends of parking lots, and even roadsides. But you got to be careful. Another great place, like I said, are some of the abandoned buildings. But don't go in them because they could be really dangerous and sometimes you could be prosecuted for doing so or trespassing. So, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks a lot for watching. And, you know, maybe let me know in the comments below if you find any cool stuff in the disturbed habitats near you. Once again, I'm Chris Ignato, signing out. Thanks a lot for watching. And remember, if you like this video, be sure to check out this video over here that YouTube has selected specifically for you based on your watch time. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. But you gotta click the bell icon, because if you don't, YouTube will never let you know when a new video of mine comes out. And remember, passion inspires spirit.